Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode on the channel. We're going to be going over Perplexity AI versus ChatGPT for doctors. And we're going to point out all the cool things that Perplexity can do for you as compared to ChatGPT and why you're going to need Perplexity for these tasks. So let's go ahead and get started. So AI tools basically are transforming how physicians, us, access and utilize medical information really catering to the need for real-time data and in clinical practice. Perplexity AI particularly is very good at web searching and source verification, while ChatGPT supports your clinical reasoning, augments it, and helps you with documentation. Each of these tools basically address different aspects of medical professionals' needs. The importance of information retrieval in medicine. That's why Perplexity is here. You want timely access to most accurate and latest guidelines and medical knowledge. And Perplexity is particularly good at that. In this episode, we're going to basically compare and contrast these abilities of Perplexity versus ChatGPT in terms of information retrieval, clinical decision support, documentation analysis, as well as some other abilities that ChatGPT has that Perplexity doesn't. So in terms of information retrieval, imagine that Perplexity AI is represented by that blue line. That blue line means that it's able to basically access real-time web searches. It's able to provide you all of the crucial sources that you need for rapidly evolving topics, and you want to make sure you stay current in terms of the guidelines. That red line could be ChatGPT's knowledge. Now I'll show you that when you, for example, look for AHA guidelines for CPR in perplexity, and this is the perplexities interface here that you're seeing, by the simple question, and this is not the pro account, you will see that it will provide you multiple sources, sometimes even more than this, nine, 10 sources. And not only it will provide, it will also give you inline citations to tell you where they come from. And you can always rely on it as it being the latest published documentation on this source okay and it's very transparent it tells you where everything comes from when you look at chat gpt you have to know that now in this case ha 2020 guidelines for cpr are the latest for cpr and ecc therefore both of them are able to pull that 2020 data but let's say the data that chat gpt is trained on if it's not updated the information that it provides you will be outdated, okay? And it will not provide inline citations. It is working on it. I've seen it recently. Sometimes it will give you the link within the text if you asked it to, but it's not made for that reason. ChatGPT is not really a research tool per se. You could still look up quick reviews and quick citations, but it's not the way perplexity does, okay? And now, you can, in ChatGPT, turn on the search button, which is this blue globe there. They can look for web browsing. You can ask it for the latest data and guidelines. But again, as I said, it will, it's not as transparent in terms of citations, and it is not guaranteed that you will get all of the latest resources. Now, comparatively, you have immediate access to relevant medical data with perplexity versus ChatGPT, which really the capabilities depends on your connection to current sources. If your web search is on and if it will find it, it usually does not provide as comprehensive of an analysis. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is clinical decision support. Perplexity is very good in providing the latest treatment guidelines and emerging medical research. It's very up-to-date, it gives you all the sources, you can basically, let's say you have a patient who is here for heart failure and you want to know what are the latest guidelines for heart failure management in 2025, right? You want to go to Perplexity, have it come up with those sources, and then you can basically take a look and see which group does your patient fall into and answer. However, if you were to have your patient specifically looked into and then ask those questions, it may be a little different. Because ChatGPT is really good at that patient scenario analysis. It will take care of the whole picture, help you with the 
clinical reasoning and differential diagnosis. But when you ask it for the latest guidelines, again, you can have the web search on, but it is not guaranteed to retrieve the latest evidence-based guidelines there. So if you were to, let's say, provide a use case where you get the evidence-based knowledge and the research papers from Perplexity AI, and then have your patient scenario in chat GPT with all of the information about your patient, then you can ask ChatGPT to use the evidence-based guideline 2025 to help you guide your plan in treating your specific patient. So the best case scenario here would be if you are able to mix and match these tools to get the best result, okay? Get the source verification, transparency, the latest data from Perplexity AI, have your patient analyzed, and augment your decision-making using ChatGPT, have it break down your documents, and then mix and match to, for the best result. Now, documents and data analysis. Perplexity is really good at synthesizing information from multiple medical sources. Let's say you're doing a literature review, okay? And you have 20, 30 sources that you need to summarize, you need to get some information on, and then get a balanced view of on the medical controversies and have all of the references consistently placed and transparently cited, you go to perplexity. ChatGPT is not really made for you to do literature review. It is not a research analysis tool. You can upload a specific patient scenarios to it and medical documents and have it extract relevant information for you and process the complex data. It is, it can help you with patient records. It can help you enhance your clinical decision-making, write an HNP and things like that. Again, you have to proofread the results on what ChatGPT does, but ChatGPT is the tool that's not made for literature review. You can use perplexity in that case. Now, perplexity, very factually accurate, patient education method, evidence-based handouts that can create However, it does not have the flexibility to draft customized communications effectively. You need ChatGPT's communication ability. Remember that ChatGPT is a large language model, is able to communicate not only in variety of languages, but also in variety of tones for diverse audience groups. That's why it is very good to have ChatGPT help you with your patient education materials. Now, we did talk about different models of ChatGPT and use cases. The ChatGPT, the 3.5, which is the free version, will still be able to do a really good job of patient education materials and administrative tasks. So you can even use just that to help you with your communications. Now, privacy and security, we had another video on how to use a ChatGPT in a HIPAA compliant way. And you can go ahead and watch that video. I have it in my Physician Efficiency series. But I'd have to say, both Perplexity and ChatGPT are not HIPAA compliant. And you have to know to how to de-identify your medical information before putting into it. Now, Perplexity AI does not give you an option to turn off the data training, which is allowing the company to train on the data you put into it. However, ChatGPT... The plus version that I showed you will allow you to turn off training data. So that way, at least it's another way of protection of sensitive information. Although you're again in charge of ensuring that everything is de-identified. Now, moving to the last part, the uh, practical limitations about the language that we talked about. Perplexity supports 28 languages, but may restrict international use for some physicians. Conversely, ChatGPT capabilities can adapt, enhance communication in diverse clinical settings. The problem is the reliance on web browsing limits some of its language functionalities. Subscription models and costs, both of them in terms of the pro ChatGPT and the plus for perplexity will both be about $20 a month. Again, each of these, it also depends on how much you use them. There's tokens and there's API keys that they have and exact pricing you would have to check on their websites, but about the same thing for really what they offer being different. 
Perplexity's goal is not really to help you with your HMP and clinical decision. It is really there for retrieval of information, providing you with the latest research, summarizing latest medical documents, and helping you with inline citations and things like that. Now, recommendations for physicians. You should assess your specific clinical and research requirements when choosing between AI tools. If you need multiple AI tools to get to what you need, then you should do that. And I highly recommend using multiple AI tools and not relying on one. And that's why we're here in this channel. Our goal is to introduce to you the latest and the best AI tools that will help you in your endeavor as a physician. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies on my channel in this video. This is just independent review. All of this is for your education and I have nothing to disclose. If you made it to the end of this video, I thank you so much for being here. I would really appreciate if you like, comment, or subscribe. These videos will not get to many people if the engagement is low. That means I need you to participate, contribute our page to look like a community where we talk about different AI tools and freely talk about what we think they can help us with. Please go ahead, comment what you like to see. If there's anything in the video that I talked about you want to comment on, go ahead and do that. If you have other use cases for perplexity that we didn't talk about in this video, you can comment that for your colleagues also to see and benefit. But thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next video.